Hello YouTube, this is Eric from Coder Snacks. Today, we'll talk about an interview question that gives us some insight into bit manipulation, finding the binary distance, or Hamming distance, between two numbers. Let's get started. As an interview question, I like Hamming distance because it can be a good test of a few different bit manipulation ideas, including getting individual bits out of a bit string, XOR, basic understanding of 2's complement, and so on. On its own, it has uses in telecommunications and cryptography, but binary and bit manipulation in general has all kinds of uses in programming. This is more of a small phone screen level question, but there are some interesting bits in here, and you'll learn more about Python numeric types than you ever wanted to know. Let's dive into the problem. As always, there are some questions we might ask before coding. How many times do we expect this function to be called? Sometimes with bit manipulation questions, caching or lookup tables can be useful. As we'll see later, there are some different approaches we can take for this problem depending on how similar we expect the numbers to be. It could be useful to ask if we expect there to be many differences in the comparison. Also, what size of input do we want? For Java or C, that means the type of the input, but for Python, we might also want to specify a size for reasons we'll see later. Let's look at some possible solutions. First, people who are not as comfortable with binary will approach this problem by trying to use library functions to convert the numbers into strings, and then doing string comparisons to get the number of differences. This is possible, but there are some pitfalls, since the lengths of the strings can be different, and you have to make sure to compare the correct parts of the strings. Such a solution might look like this, but this isn't a good solution. It's much more efficient to work on the ints themselves, and as we'll see later, this isn't doing the right thing with negative numbers. Before we discuss other solutions, let's discuss binary. When we represent numbers normally, we're using decimal or base 10. This means that the first digit is worth 1, or 10 to the 0th power. The second digit is worth 10, or 10 to the 1st power. The third digit is worth 100, or 10 to the 2nd power, and so on. If instead we think of digits as being zero indexed, the nth digit is worth 10 to the n. Binary is the same, except instead of 10, we use 2. We only use the digits 1 and 0, and each digit is worth 2 to the n. The first digit is worth 1, the second 2, 4, 8, and so forth. Even if this is all we know about binary, we can approach this like a math problem. Take a look at the zero index, or least significant bit. When the number is even, this bit is a 0. If the number is odd, this bit is a 1. Why? Well, the second digit represents 2, and you can think of everything from the second digit on as saying how many multiples of 2 there are. Since all multiples of 2 are even, the only way to make a number odd is to change the first bit to 1. What we can do, then, is check if both numbers are odd, or both numbers are even. If so, the first bit is the same, and if not, the first bit is different. Then, we have to move all the bits to the right, so we can look at the next bit. We can do this by just dividing by 2. This code is also straightforward to implement. For positive integers, that works fine, but for negative numbers it might not work, for two reasons. Why not? First, when do you stop doing this? It seems like you stop when both numbers are 0, like this. At this point, you've gotten rid of all the 1 bits, and it seems like we're done. But, if you have a negative number, it won't work, because minus 1 divided by 2 is still minus 1. Second, negative ints are represented in something called 2's complement, which doesn't work the same way. This requires a bit of a detour to explain, bear with me for a few minutes. How do we know a number is negative? In decimal, we put a minus sign in front of it, but in many binary representations, we use the most significant bit, or the number furthest to the left, of a number to indicate its sign. However, if we don't know this is happening, it's ambiguous. For example, if we have this number, is it representing 37? Is it representing negative something? We don't know. In some languages, we say whether or not we're using this negative bit by declaring whether a variable is signed, meaning it uses a sign bit, or not. In Java, all integer types are signed. In C, you can declare whether a number is signed or not. In Python, it's complicated. We'll discuss that in a moment. 
In any case, if the only difference between a negative number and a positive number is the most significant bit, then all we have to do is convert both to positive numbers, add a bit if they were different, and then use our function, which we know works on positive numbers, right? Our case was 0 and negative 1 should look something like this, and there should be two bits different, right? No. This is where 2's complement comes in. 2's complement is a system where, for negative numbers, instead of counting up from all zeros with a 1 sign bit, we count down from all 1's. For example, let's take an 8-bit signed number. Where 1, 2, and 3 are represented like this in binary, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 are represented like this. The maximum and minimum values we can store are 127 and negative 128, like so. Okay, great. That's a system that seems unexpected and unintuitive. Why would we do this? Without going into too much detail, certain mathematical operations, like addition, are easier this way. Look at this example. If we do it the more intuitive way, let's say we're adding 15 and negative 17. It seems complicated. How do you start? How do you make this come out? It's actually a bit complicated in decimal, too, if you think about it. But with 2's complement, we just add them together like you would expect, like this. We start with 1 plus 1 equals 2, which is 0 in base 2 with a carry bit. Then in the next column, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, which is 1 with a carry bit, and so on for the whole number. Additionally, this means you can subtract by flipping the sign and adding. But how do you convert a number to its negative 2's complement version quickly? It turns out you can take the complement and add 1. For example, in our 8-bit version, to convert 5 to negative 5, we flip all the bits and add 1. Done. If we make a test program in Java, we can see that this behaves as we expect for negative numbers. The top number is missing the leading zeros, and the bottom number has extra 1s since int is 32 bits. Important to note, though, is that we don't think the top number, 101, is a negative number, even though it starts with a 1. We know this because the length of an int is 32 bits, so if this were a negative number, we'd see all 32 bits like we do in the bottom number. In Python, it's more complicated. When we do the same thing at a Python REPL, we get this. Uh, those look like the same except for the minus sign, Eric. What gives? The high-level hand-wavy version is that Python numbers have a variable size. That size variable also stores whether or not the number is negative. If the size is negative, it's a negative number. So, when we go to display negative 5, it says, OK, it's negative, here's a minus sign, and here's the binary representation of a 5. Notice there is a minus sign, and not a sign bit as we might expect. This is called sign magnitude representation, and it's what we would have expected earlier before we talked about 2's complement. But what if we take the number negative 5 and use the AND binary operation on the number with all 1's? We'll explain this in a bit more detail in a couple minutes, but this is supposed to return the same number. When we do it with a positive number, we do get the same number, but when we do it with a negative number, we get the 2's complement of it. But, when we enter that same string back into the REPL, we get the number as if it were unsigned. Python treats B as if the bits were unsigned, and the sign bit and 2's complement only comes out when you do binary operations. That 5-minute detour into the land of binary negative numbers explains why our mod 2 divide by 2 solution for this problem doesn't work. We can't just treat negative numbers like disguised positive numbers due to 2's complement. And, if someone asks you this question in a Python interview, well, now you have enough knowledge to really blow your interviewer away. Since our math solution doesn't work, what can we do? Now that we've explored binary representation, let's look at some binary solutions. Naively, what we want to do is, for each bit, look at the two values and see when they're different. How can we look at the value of an individual bit? We can use AND to do this. We saw AND briefly before, but let's dig in. When you compare two booleans with AND, the result is only true when both booleans are true. We use this in conditionals all the time, right? The same is true with binary, where we use the ampersand symbol to represent the AND operation. But when you have two numbers, you can do this AND across all the bits at one time. Let's look at an example. Let's say we have 27, 
represented by 11011, and 14, represented by 1110. If we line them up on top of each other, we can go bit by bit and and them together bitwise. The first bits here are not both 1, so this is a 0. The second bits are both 1, so this is a 1, and on through the whole number. At the end, we have 1010, which is 10. When we go back to our REPL, we can see the same thing. So how do we use AND to get an individual bit? We make something called a mask. If we make a number that is a single one in the bit position we want to check, and AND it with our number, if that bit is a zero in the original number, then the result will be zero. If that bit is not zero, the result will be the same as our mask. Or, for our purposes, not zero will suffice. There are two other things we need to know. First, how do we get the bit in the right place? We can use the bit shift operator. This operator, less than less than, allows us to move a number to the left, inserting zeros in the rightmost positions. If we consider the bits zero indexed from the right, we can use one left shift n in a loop to repeatedly check one bit at a time. Second, if we are putting this in a loop, when do we stop? In Java, you know the number of bits from the type, for example, int is 32 bits. In Python, you can use the bit length method in 2.7 or later, and loop to the maximum of that, since the larger number will have some bits set. Here's the code in Java. It's a simple loop over the 32 bits of the two ints, with a few test cases. Once you have all the pieces, it's straightforward. Here's some similar code in Python. This works, but the negative case looks wrong. Remember that in Python, though, integers are variable sized. So what's happening is we're seeing 0 as 0 bits and negative 1 as 1 bit, and the bits are different, so we're getting 1. If we want Python to treat our ints as having a certain bit length, we can simulate this by doing any bit manipulation with something with that many bits. So one idea would be to pass an optional minimum bit length, and suddenly it works. If you're solving this in Python in an interview, this is the kind of thing to discuss with your interviewer. Scanning through the bits like this is a decent solution, but we can do better. There's a binary operator, XOR, that returns true if the two bits are different. If we XOR the two numbers first, we can check that number for ones that are set, which are exactly the bits that are different. This is better because instead of checking two numbers for set bits, we only have to check the one. We can modify our Java code, and the code looks like this. This solution is great, but there's another binary trick we can use. What we're doing here is XORing the two numbers together and counting the one bits, and there are better ways of counting ones. Try this. Take a number, then subtract one from it. Then, AND those two numbers together. What happens in the result? It turns out to get rid of the least significant 1. Subtracting 1 turns the least significant 1 into a 0, and while all the less significant zeros are turned back into 1s, it doesn't matter because in the original number they're all zeros. so when we AND, it has the effect of removing that least significant 1. Why do we care about this? If we have a method to remove a 1 bit from a number, we can do this repeatedly until we have no one bits left, i.e. the number is zero. And if we count how many times we did it, we know how many one bits were in the original number. This even works with negative numbers in two's complement. Subtracting one, even though it makes a negative number more negative, has the effect of counting down in two's complement, due to the reversal of counting direction we discussed earlier. This approach is great, especially when we know there are only a few ones in the number, since the time this takes is proportional to the number of ones. Unfortunately, we can only use this if the number of bits for our numeric type is fixed, so we can't use it in Python. Why not? Imagine that we have a negative number and only the sign bit is set. This is the most negative possible number. What happens when we subtract one? We wrap back around to positive numbers due to overflow. This turns the sign bit to a zero and all the other bits to ones, so when we do the AND, we get a zero overall. We're relying on this overflow for the effect we want. But in Python, there is no overflow. 
We just get a larger negative number with one more bit, and then when we AND them, it extends the top number to the length of the bottom number, and we get another larger number with just one bit set. So in Python, stick with some other method. The implementation in Java is even more straightforward now, and it looks like this. If you're interested in more, there are a few even more arcane methods that you can use to solve this problem, possibly even faster. We won't describe them in depth here, but here are some quick examples. You could pre-calculate the number of 1s in all 8-bit or 16-bit integers. Then you can split your number into 8 or 16-bit blocks, then sum together your pre-calculated answers. Wikipedia has some efficient ways to use really extreme bit twiddling to quickly get an answer. I'll put a link in the description. Also, modern Intel processors have a processor instruction to do this, and GCC has built-ins for it, so you could use that. Binary is interesting and has a number of uses, such as bit vectors for compact arrays of booleans, parity and checksums, compression, efficient file types, and many others. We've just scratched the surface, and we'll cover more in future videos. Next time, we're going to talk about problems where you try to find the shortest path from one place to another. Given a list of tuples containing origin, destination, and distance, how can you find the shortest path between two given points? I hope you learned something from this video. I know I learned a lot making it. If you have any questions, comments, things I've missed, or questions you want covered, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please take the time to like the video, subscribe, or both. I greatly appreciate it. See you here next time on Coder Snacks.